Uh, first of all, gentlemen, have any of you been out to see any of the properties that we're going to talk about tonight? No. I've been to all of them. I went to everyone except for the um, 1156 Hobart Drive. Okay, and I went to uh, all of them. Uh, have any of you spoken with anyone regarding the variances we'll consider tonight? No. No. And uh, do any of you believe at this point that you will have to abstain from voting tonight on these items? No. 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 All right. Any consideration of the previous meeting's minutes? Make a motion to approve the uh, January meeting minutes. Second that motion. Okay, it's moved and seconded that we approve the minutes from the meeting of two months ago. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, minutes approved. We'll, uh, we'll, think we'll consider this one when we get to that. Uh, we'll start right out with the uh, Tri City Glass issue, item number one. We have Mr. Jennings and Mr. Uh, Newstead here. Yes, sir. Would you care to come forward and uh, make your case? Okay. Thanks for taking time again. Nice to see you guys. Um, I was, uh, I'm Mark Nyston from Keller. We're the contractor on the, on the building. Uh, Phil is ob obviously with Creative Signs, and he brought it to our attention that uh, the signage that uh, we had planned uh, supersedes and is the 200 square feet, which is allowed. Um, the building itself, uh, the face of the building, is about 4,400 square feet. Uh, and we're just being very up front with this whole thing. The actual signage is really, we're just measuring the footprint of it. It's all individual backlit letters and individual triangles and things like that. So if you actually took the signage itself, I don't know how you guys look at that. If this whole piece would be the actual sign or if the individual writing would be, because if I move that writing along. Draw a box around the whole thing. So you draw a box around the whole thing. So, we're at 338 square feet, which is less than 10% of the whole frontage of the new building. Um, this is just the stages of it, which we talked about. You guys have given us some variance before on that. We appreciate that. And I just gave you a package on what the finished product would look like. <coughs> and I'll let Phil describe the signage here a little bit better. All the signage, the letters, the logo, everything are backlit or halo lit. You guys familiar with that description of the signages? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in all reality, when it comes to being illuminated at night, it won't shine out straight directly at traffic or residences or businesses right across the street. It's very classy looking. Uh, there's a back plate behind the letters and the logos that the letters will actually reflect off of. Um, the, letter, the, the LEDs that are inside the channel letters shine directly at that back plate and then just illuminate against that wall or the back plate there. So um, very, very simple, very classy looking, but not intrusive at all in any way, shape, or form. And if you guys want to see this exhibit, if you look at how that box is drawn, it's really, it's from the top of this triangle all the way down and from here to here. So the footprint of the whole box, if you draw it, is 28 foot 11 by 1148. Okay. I think that might be a good package of variance. The argument you're making is basically that you would like a variance because if, if you were to adhere to the ordinance as it's written, uh, you believe that it would simply be an inadequate sign size wise or probably even have, uh, it would probably not even look right. Yes, it's, it's not proportionate with the building at all. That's, that's pretty much the main objection to it, yes. Because the, the face of the building is a lot bigger than what's been previously there. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that, well, like I say, being less than 10% of the overall square footage, you know, um, we think that's pretty fair. Uh, it's not gonna, like I say, stick out like a sore thumb. It's gonna look nice and classy on the front of the building. There's a sign there now over the main entrance. How big is that? So <coughs> to be honest with you, I couldn't tell you. It's not very big, no. The one by the sidewalk? <coughs> this one right over? Right over this. Yeah. 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 Probably that one. Yeah. yeah. I, I, 
but I tell you what, maybe it's a four by eight sheet, maybe. Yeah, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Are you going to be keeping the one that's on the street, too? Yeah, I believe they are, yes. Yeah, the pylon sign, yes. And that is a, from what, that is a message center out there, too. Right. Yes. Further questions on the app? Not for me. Not for me. Okay, gentlemen, if you could have a seat, we'll uh, think about it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Sure. <coughs> so, what are your considerations? Well, I like the fact that it's backlit. Um, there's no residential property that's going to be uh, lit up in any kind of a spotlight fashion. Uh, I did go down and take a look at uh, the Martin Hardware property where they actually. Uh, they have a sign like that what would be on this side of the building mm -hmm. and across the front too. <coughs> and it's yeah, of the same type. So I, we wouldn't be uh, stepping on the bounds as far as the uh, the space allowance. Mm -hmm. Plus this is only going to be on the front. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I don't see a problem with this either. You know, in the proportion of the size of the building, to what they had before. I think it looks nice. Uh, I don't think it's overly big. Uh, so I don't have a problem with it. Um, I don't see why I would reject it. Mm -hmm. right. On that note, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the variances requested. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Mark, seconded by Mr. Hoy, that we grant the variance as requested for the uh, Tri-City Glass project. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. You have your variance. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Okay, item number two is uh, Mr. Lok. Yes. Lock. Lock. Yes. Excuse me. This is the Hobart Drive property. Yes. I believe I need to come prepared. I'm going to drop off the application. I dropped off some pictures and I'm going to something. They are. Oh, they are. Yeah. Yep. 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 You're part of our packet. Okay, you have a house on the corner and you've got a stoop that you built and somewhere along the line discovered that it was not. Yeah, Steve. I think it's believe it's cherry and stopped by. He said that someone <coughs> mentioned, or maybe he just noticed. I think he said someone mentioned that it was too big for a front set back or a front scoop or whatever. Um, if I'd have known that, I would have applied for it prior, which now I don't. I hated to just take and cut it up without, you know, trying to get a, a variance for it because it's a brand new deck on there. It's not very high. It's not. Uh, it doesn't block any views from any angles. Um, I think it only sticks out about a foot and a half further than what the setback allows, but it's longer, it's quite a bit longer. Yeah. Foot and a half, you said? Yeah. On the, on the, let's see, the south side of the house, the driveway runs parallel right there, along with like the utility, the sub pump, the central air, the, uh, the, you know, the power meter. And on the other side, it's actually a really old house I've been fixing up for my daughter. On the other side, it's really close to the lot line. And so the front door is the only common door that I had where I could have like a little seating area. That's why I actually had somebody, uh, I wish to knew the contractor would have mentioned maybe that if he knew, maybe he didn't know there, but ultimately it's my responsibility. And so now I guess it's, it's just too big and I hate to take the down with the same How many feet is the door to the edge? You probably should. Um, you know. I want to say like 11 and a half. By maybe like six and a half or something like that. I think it said five by five or something. So it's like ten inches off the ground. There's no railing. Um, it doesn't obstruct any views. I don't know if someone, you know, if someone had an issue with it or if, or if Steve just noticed it. But um, I don't know if anybody had any issues with it. Thanks. Maybe I can help answer that. Or something. You intend to put any railing on it? 
No. Okay. If I need to, but I don't intend to, that's why I made it as low as I did. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have to. Yeah, so your argument basically is that you've got... I don't really have another common door. You've got one place to put it. <laughs> right. You've got to have a stoop there anyway. Some sort. Right. Uh, make it a little bigger and intrude it a little further, but uh, that's where you're... I have no questions. Anybody else have any questions of the applicant? No. No. Okay, Mr. Lock, if you could have a seat, we'll uh, park you. this over. All right. What do you think, gentlemen? This is just be. about the setbacks themselves, right? It's all it is is a setback issue, right, Mark? Correct. So this it doesn't look of, like much. Side and front, and there it just talks <coughs> about the front. So is it just the front setback? It's it just a front setback variance. Ah, oh. that's a the foot and a half. Was a little misleading. Okay, so that's what we're talking about a foot and a half. Uh, about a foot and a half, yeah. It's a corner lot. Yeah, it's a corner lot, so they've got two fronts. He's got nowhere to go. Right. Yeah, so it's... No, I, I hear you. And you can see that the way that it was... The way we're defining the front setback here is a little bit based on the uh, front of the neighboring houses. Correct, correct. So yeah, so it's facing to the right on this yeah. image. Yeah, so it's... Anyway, I don't have any problem with this. I don't either. I don't either. All right, then. Violent agreement as usual. I'll uh, make a motion that we uh, grant this variance as requested. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion before us made by Mr. Mark, seconded by Mr. Hoy to grant the variance as requested on item number two. All in favor? Aye. 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 You have your variance. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, moving right along. <coughs> okay, we have item number three. This is the property out at the edge of uh, Nicolay Drive. Uh, seems to me like the edge of Green Bay. <laughs> that is the edge of Green Bay? Yeah. Yeah, very Last property. Last the property. Yeah. Okay, we have Mr. Uh, Martin and Mr. Antno. Both of you care to come forward and we can <coughs> discuss this? If you're both on the same side, if you're not. Well, I think we <laughs> came to an agreement oh, okay. on the neighbor. And I didn't want to put you in a spot. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> My card's in there too. Yep. Steve Vita. Okay. On the third one. Right there. Got it. All right. Sorry. We, we came, I think we came to agreement, Mike. You tell them basically I'm fine if they keep four feet from the property line and they're not going to bring that drive all the way down to the water past my house it'll be turning and i don't know maybe steve can highlight how yeah. that would the maps there. up there we're actually going to change the 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 layout are you guys familiar with all this maybe before we get into it i was out there it it was was out okay there. this used to be a commercial property it was a sailing club there is a boat ramp there and thus the reason the duck shack <coughs> mr martin wants it to put up a building there to store his boat and I was a little but confused which property was yours because it is it the lot there's a vacant lot like, well, and then there was this is there there is a house up on front yeah here look at the air photo right. there is a house on the front of it that Michael currently rents out so there's a home there and a garage there and actually when you when you turn into this property you're right right next to that garage when you turn into the property to go to the back so it's it's deceiving knowing exactly where you are but for the most part it's vacant all the way back um, um, Ron's home is right there. It'll be the first home closest to the water there. Um, that's Ron's that's home. That's the right lot? No, the lot on the north is, you can see the boats there? This, okay. this is that's the summer side. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is my house. I see. And then they'd be coming in along here, four feet, and then we're ever, it, before the, it'll be before my house where yeah. he said he'd have it turning in to where they park and stuff there. As long as it didn't come down past my house, I mean, I was fine with four feet. And we kind of agreed to that. <laughs> I mean. Yep, yep, yeah, that's perfectly yeah. fine. Um, so we still have to submit a site plan, but again, just backing up, this was zoned commercially. And the way the way Mr. Mart wanted to utilize this, the best way to do this was, because we have a home <coughs> on it right now, was to eventually create a condominium association so he could potentially sell the house and still have you know the, the I'll call it 
semi business that he wants to do here. So we had an allowed use already by doing this because of the zoning we had. <coughs> we were told by staff to rezone it to residential, come and ask for the conditional use to do what's called the Duck Shack, which is going to be a, a, a club, sportsman's for a, club. A sportsman club, if you will. Not a big place, but he would store his boats and stuff like that. A couple of guys would. Uh, a two member club. A two member club. <laughs> and, uh, Me and small my buddy. Club. Um, so they would still dock their boats in and out of there because um, the ramp and everything is there, but then utilize the, the, the duck shack, if you will, as their gathering place before and after kind of a thing. So that's kind of what it's going to be. The so majority of it is storage for Michael's personal things, but then there would be a room in there or a you can describe it, but you know, room in there. Yeah, and we also have we also have interest from the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. They they've expressed interest in in just renting some storage space because they have access to Point Savo um, wetlands and uh, nature preserve that's just to the north of there. Mark, could you explain the uh, the variance issue here? This yeah. is something to do with a transitional property. Right. So. Once they receive the conditional use for this building, which they have went through council and received it, that triggers the transitional 15-foot yard requirement along the conditional use and a residentially zoned property. They're seeking to put the driveway along that property line within the 15-foot required transitional yard. So they're seeking to reduce that transitional yard to be able to accommodate this driveway. Um, on the conditional use, there were some conditions placed requiring them to also add some landscaping along the south property line, so headlights and stuff if somebody is backing in or out these parking spaces won't affect Mr. Antonow. It also required some foundation landscaping along the building. Okay. So the, 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 uh, the variance is being triggered by, the, by the, the fact that there's two different zoning with these adjacent properties. Correct. The conditional use. They're both now zoned single-family residential but the conditional use for a sportsman's club has triggered the transitional yard requirement. Okay. And if it weren't for that, there wouldn't be a variance needed. Correct. Because they'd be within the individual lots. Yeah, the individual residential. Okay. So, Mr. Anto, you were w involved with whatever was involved with uh, conditional Plenty. use permit. Yep. And I and I supported that. I mean, I think they'll mm -hmm. be a good neighbor and stuff. And you know, I, I think, you know, I mean, I'm familiar with the owner and, the, and his partner and that. And I don't anticipate any problems, and so I've been trying to accommodate as much as I could for them to try to do what they want. I mean, in an ideal world, would I like more than a four-foot, you know? Uh, yeah, but I mean, I don't think it'll be a problem, especially since they're not going way down past the house and, you know, gonna they're going to be turning in there a little <coughs> earlier. And like they have a little buffer they're going to put in besides. So I mean, I'm I'm fine with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure I am, but anyway, I, if I understand, I just want to make sure I understood where you were involved with this because it's a relatively new house. It's so yeah. new that it's not doesn't show up on the city's uh, <laughs> the city's maps. Can you show the the uh, yeah? There's been a driveway alongside of that property where you see the white line, the last white line on there. Um, there's been a driveway along there for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, however many years. I mean, the driveway's always been there. So the Windjammers um, Sailing Club, which has been around for eons, um, the driveway's always gone right alongside of his property. It's it was an old, old gravel driveway from when I bought it before I built the house. And uh, it was there, but then the great neighbors on the north of it, Irv Goth, Gothier Construction, Gothiers and Roses, would do all their duck hunting. They started letting the club use that Point Sobble Drive on the north end. So instead of using that little gravel drive, so then it kind of grew up and ended up looking more like grass than a gravel driveway, but it, all you had to do was dig down a little, you found <coughs> plenty of gravel there. Yeah, it's all, it's all so, hard pan now. So what's that little Gothier Lane, which also is called Oh, Sobble Drive, I think, on the map. Yeah. It's really not something that's available to you. It's it's no. really a driveway for private whatever that's up there. They so fenced that, that in how many years ago, Mike? They put a fence up there oh, because yeah. people started just going in there. They didn't want 20 years all ago. the public in there, especially their 
with some theft and vandalism mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah. tried to <coughs> tighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we still use that. I mean, you can't you <coughs> can't see it because the grass. I mean, Ron does a nice job of getting the grass cut, but. Um, I've got I've got pictures that'll show from years ago that there's still gravel that shows through, um, and there's always been a driveway there. So I'm not really it, it's 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 known it's it's been utilized that way for years and years and years. Now I'm just looking to get the the uh, the approval for it with this conditional use of this building, just so that we have a picture on that. That's a picture of the driveway. I I didn't print it in color, but you can see the driveway. Yeah, okay. it's just a two track through the grass now, but it is gravel. The grass just came up and they currently maintain it. Yeah, when we did our, um, we did this wetland foliation, there's a couple of pictures that I'll show you. Maybe the driveway. Maybe the roofs. Yeah, sure. So, on this, on this picture here, um, here's the driveway. Oh, yeah. okay. You can see that the gravels. It runs all the way down and then goes in. And this is where this is where Ron's house is today would be written yeah. in this area. So this and this is from two thousand. This is the aerial from two thousand. It's always been a driveway. Okay. You know, and on the planning commission they agreed to one of the biggest things. I didn't I, I didn't want to I didn't want anything it's sort of twenty four hour they agreed to dawn to dusk mm -hmm. and operations. I mean that I don't see as a disturbance to me anyway. Okay. What kind of traffic are we really looking at here downstream? Well, I, I might go there, you know, once or twice or so a week. And your partner would be going there too? Same time. Because when we go duck hunting in October, November, December, I mean, otherwise the rest of the year will <coughs> It's not being utilized. Okay. What about when UWGB? Um, UWGB has access to actually use that road, the Point Ensemble Road. Okay. So they have they have the ability to access it through that road. I don't have the ability to do that, but <coughs> they own property just to the north of that building that you see on the other side <coughs> of the waterway, mm -hmm. and somehow they have some sort of a a right of way with the property that they have so that they can access through that point of ensemble drive. Are there going to be many members in the club <coughs> other than yourself and your partner? No, that's it. Okay, so there's not going to be an undue amount of traffic going up and down the road for him? No. Mm -hmm. That's what they mentioned at Planning Commission, so... It hasn't been any yeah, different with yeah. over the years. No, it's just been during a couple months we'd see people there and it was just during the daytime. To some extent, though, Mr. Martin, this is self-imposed in that you you own the, the houses up on the road. Um, what do you mean by self-imposed? You could you could get rid of the houses on the road to make the to make the to, one of them anyway to get to make the road not impinge on the, the uh, transitional. There is a garage, yeah, there's a garage there. We could tear down part of the garage or tear down the garage to make the driveway to go in. Um, it would mean then bringing in a bunch of fill because where the current driveway that we go in and out of is already built <coughs> up and it's already, you know, it's got the gravel base to it and foundation and everything else. Then it would mean creating more of that, which, you know, you could fill all the way down that, that side. There's, n there's no argument from me about it. Um, it's just, it, it's something that's always been like it is. And he's the immediate neighbor who doesn't have a problem with that. And I don't see it really changing much from how we're using it. The use is very light and very low. Um, okay, those, those were my concerns. Number yeah. one, that there's another road on the north, but that's not, ex not allowed to that's off limits. That's off limits for you. Yeah, it's got and a gate and a lock. I can't get through it. Yeah. yeah. Number two, it it um, is that you're, you're you're part of the reason why you're needing a variance is that you're retaining the buildings up on Nicolay Drive. Yeah. Yeah. And the argument against that is that there's a road here that's always been there. Correct. 
And apparently there's been some negotiations and discussions between you and Mr. Anton. Yeah. And it probably go back before this uh, proceeding yeah. to the uh, previous proceeding that you got a condition on his yeah. So, yeah. Okay, I think I understand the situation. Further questions? <coughs> Are you expect, expecting to improve the driveway at all or just leave it in its current state? Uh, it, it all depends on what I'm, I guess, what I'm required to do. Okay. But your plan would be to leave it in its state. Well, I, 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 I believe it, it will to be, be required to be improved. Okay. To hard surface. Okay. That's the, the standard code requirement. Sure. Okay. I have no further questions. you have any further discussion? All right. We thank you for seat. your consideration. Yes, yeah, thank you. Any comments, gentlemen? I, I don't share the same concerns that Don's raised, but I, I think that this is a pretty narrow lot. Uh, the existing structure, structures, in my opinion, make it difficult to apply um, <coughs> with the variance unless you were to tear down the garage and within that use for a period of time. The neighbor is supportive of it. Um, they're going to be required to pave it. Uh, so I, 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 I'm in favor of it. Tom? I think there's pretty much a minimal impact as far as what they're asking to do. Uh, the fact that they have the neighbors uh, buying and consent to move forward uh, weighs pretty heavily on, on my yeah, for me, you know, in a situation like this, I try to think about not only now, but 40 years down the road, you know, the new homeowner in that lot, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the scenario of tearing out the garage and moving the driveway to where it's supposed to be, or, or where it would be mandated to be, I should say. Um, I don't see it changing the use. Um, the overall impact, you know, so I think logically I don't see any reason to require the driveway to be 15 feet instead of 4 feet. So I guess I also am in favor of this. <coughs> Two, looking down the road, if somebody else buys the property, they're going to see what's existing. They're not going to buy it and then something's going to fall down on it, right? But they're they're going to be viewing the property as it would be existing, so and that would be part of it. If you're going to, well, if you want to buy it, you know, here's the road. It is what it is. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just just for the record, I I uh, used to work with Mr. Antonell in a previous life, uh, but <coughs> but because of that, I understand that um, he and he and the applicants have had some discussions. I know that Mr. Antno is sufficiently clued into the local situation that is not uh, the normal um, property owner next to uh, something like this. And uh, these discussions that we're, had, that we're having here are somewhat secondary to undoubtedly the discussions that must have been had to get the conditional use permit. So to the extent that those uh, discussions were had, that uh, Mr. Antino and the applicant have had some discussions on their own. Uh, I think the applicant um, satisfied me on the fact that this has been there before. It's not a new road. Um, so I agree. I, I think this makes, uh, this makes sense. Oh, one more item too. It, it, once again, and, and apparently we may not be talking about this later on, but this is an issue where we've got two, two properties of different uh, zoning or different uh, um, uses and that's part of the reason why we've got this strange 15 foot buffer uh, which is a good thing to have I guess between residents and uh, commercial property but um, I don't think it's as uh, I think in light of the light use that we're looking at here uh, there may be uh, a reason to uh, further reason to grant the variance so anyway that's a long winded uh, explanation of why all four of us are once again in agreement. So uh, somebody would be interested in making a motion, we can move on. 
I'll make the motion to approve the variance as requested. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made by Mr. Babcock, seconded by Mr. Hoy to grant the variance uh, as requested for the Martin property at 3597 McLeod Drive. Further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Thanks. Just, I, I think they request, in the request, it's three feet, but we agreed to four feet. I just wanted to make oh, sure. We'll, we'll note that. Okay. That, uh, we'll let, let that be clear, Mark, in, I got uh, it. in your notes, that uh, okay. the applicants have the uh, neighbor to read for. Yep. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, we have now moved forward to <laughs> Number four, we'll move up forward to uh, 722 Stewart Street. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Jason Gossick. Mr. Marks, if you want to familiarize yourself with the property. Uh, I had purchased the property at 722 Stewart's in June of last year, contingent on purchasing the property, but I had worked with the city on purchasing the lot next door adjacent to the property. Uh, to uh, merge it eventually at the first of the year as a side yard. Uh, the mistake is the first time home off owner. I purchased the lot and had a fence constructed within days afterwards. Uh, eight months later, I received a letter stating that a permit was in order. Uh, my fault for not doing my due diligence to, to find out if the contractor finished up or if I needed a uh, permit. Uh, but uh, the fence is there, and I would like the opportunity to keep the fence the way it is. Uh, in lieu of the neighborhood, uh, it is aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it is well maintained. Uh, eventually, the side of the house, uh, a door was, is eventually going to be put in so that there will be an access from the house into the yard. We also own two good sized dogs. Um, that can clear a four foot fence or five foot fence. So we're mm -hmm. looking to keep the six foot fence so they don't clear the fence also. As well as keep it guarded because you know open chain <coughs> fence is just gonna invite a noise ordinance down the road. It's gonna invite a lot of a lot of other unnecessary hassles. Uh, the neighborhood is in redevelopment. It's a growing neighborhood. The neighborhood isn't that best. Uh, I think with the presence in that neighborhood it's just showing that you know there's roots there that there's somebody in that neighborhood prior to the lot and me purchasing the house the home adjacent uh, is a foreclosure that w foreclosure that was just purchased uh, the gentleman is now redeveloping that home as well and we have called the place several times uh, while the house was vacant um, for people living in it or breaking in and sleeping in there uh, the fence was a uh, measure of security to allow the wall so so, so yeah, the, the point you're trying to make is that you you have reason to have a taller fence. Please. Um, part of it's your dogs. Correct. Yeah. Part of it's the neighbors. Correct. So and, and we're talking about the neighbors at 714? Well, we're talking not necessarily the, 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 the immediate neighbors, oh. but also the neighborhood as a whole. Because if you really, if this was able to pan it back out more, there's the apartment complex that's located right off of Webster, I believe. Uh, on the opposite side of Monroe is Grace Luther Church, St. John's Homeless Shelter. Uh, that is just a funnel for all types of people coming from El Ranchito, that the complex, that just funnel right across our house to go to the facilities to get free donations, to go to the homeless shelter. So there's a lot of foot traffic. And with that, there's a lot of debris that gets left. There's a lot of garbage that gets left there on a daily basis. Prior to the fence being put up, the, the neighborhood as a whole, yeah, they kind of used it as a dump. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now that we're, we fenced it, we're showing a, f a presence there. You know, there's more, more people that are actively taking care of in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, is us purchasing the direct result? No, probably not. But you know, we're showing a presence there in that little area. Because we're also asking the board to consider it as a side yard. Um, everything that we've received uh, is noted that it's a front yard. Um, so with the, the fencing zoning for a side yard would be a six foot fence. The front yard would be three foot, four foot, five foot opaque to a certain 
degree back off the sidewalk. That's that's true. That's a good point. Now you said you were going to consolidate those two lots in some fashion. Initially, right. when I had spoken with the city purchasing the lot, that's what we wanted to do. She's they, well, it was stated that it couldn't be done till the first of the year because of tax purposes. I had to get a hold of my bank so that they would allow me to merge the property as a whole as the first of the year. So I was under the impression that the first of the year that would just become my side yard. It because will, that it will be one property tied together. It's one property. Is it is it, one to, is it a is it a lot that usually have a house on it? I yes. Yes. It used to be seven twenty story would, streets. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. So you've really got two lots there, one of which you fenced, the other which is the house. Correct. Mark, is, do you have a further discussion on where this ended up, how this ended up? I, I don't have a lot of background on this one. I know they had talked to Paul working through it. Um, my understanding is it, the front yard portion is because it's within the front yard setback. Correct. That's why we're going from the, the three feet to the six. And, and some of that applies um, on what would be the right portion of this diagram because that is considered their side yard as well and upping that to six feet. The rear allows six feet. I'm so familiar as myself with this code somewhat, but I believe that that's, it, it is both the front and the side that we need the variance for. But I think the side would be six feet also. Six feet. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the front. myself. Corner, yeah, it's the side and rear allow six feet, so it's basically just the variance is for the front yard and then the portion along the side yard that is within the front yard setback is right. the, the right. front yard height. And, no, and to be within the code, then that should be three feet? Three feet. Everything within the required front yard setback distance would need to be three feet because this is a, a solid fence, correct? Correct. Solid. Yeah, correct. so it would be the three feet for this portion and then until we meet the required front yard setback would all have to be three feet. And so starting at that front yard setback line, six feet would be permitted. Is the front yard setback for the fence different than the house? Same. So right now it lines up with the front of the house. No, actually it's the adjacent. house is, is Oops, actually sorry. closer than what today's front yard setback would be. Our stoop is on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. So if this was a brand new infill house, you know, the house would be sitting back at the required front setback line and all fencing in front of that portion would be required to be three feet. But the fence is in line with in the line current with the existing the house, right? Home. Correct. Yeah. Which is probably, yeah. for you guys that have been past the site, is probably pretty much in line with all the other existing homes. Yeah. Correct. It yeah. does run parallel to all of the homes on that property. Okay. Yeah. So it would not extend a view of, say, the neighbors at 714 or further down. So I guess one more question uh, for Mark is, I thought that the setback was based on, you know, the... Uh, this, I guess normal setback of the neighborhood or the street. Yeah, without knowing all of the dimensions, I couldn't do the the math proportionally figure out where how exactly how much of that fence well, falls I guess, within it. Yeah, I guess more of what I'm getting at is so if the neighborhood say setback is five feet from the sidewalk, you know, at what point does the city say, well, no, you know, if it was a new construction, it's going to be 15 yep. feet, even though it doesn't match the rest of the neighborhood. So when at least 50% of the front footage of any block built up of the principal structure, the front yard of new structure shall be equal to the average of the existing structure, except that any structure which is set back 20% more or less from the average may be discounted. So basically, if you you take all the, the distance every house is set back, as long as f more than 50% of them are in front of the required setback of today, you average those and that becomes your new setback. So exactly where, you know, that setback be is it five feet, is it six feet, is it seven feet, without having the exact distance for every house. I couldn't say what the official number is, but it is less than if it was, you know, being built as an empty lot. Does that sort of answer your question? In theory. If, I mean, your, your thought process is correct, yes. It's not, you know, 25-foot front yard setback. They would be able to average 
because okay. of some of the existing houses. Because I guess as a layman, I look at that overall, you know, that satellite shot, and I say, uh, it looks to me like all those front setbacks are the same, so what's, yeah. the, what's the issue? I wish it was Paul who could answer that better. <laughs> I'm, this is my understanding of it. Okay. Yeah. The, the, big ish, the big thing you see when you, when you look at the property in person mm -hmm. it is not that it uh, is too close to the site, mm -hmm. which it may be or may not be. The big thing is that it's, it's that high right. where you're used to seeing something lower in the front. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah because in uh, driving through that neighborhood, there is a preponderance of six foot fences on many properties. Mm -hmm. Mostly they're on the side yards. And it's, yeah, he's correct. And uh, I live not too far from where you are. And uh, uh, with the fact that they made that big park to the east of you, uh, that's going to invite two kinds of traffic. You're going to have families, and you're going to have not so friendly. Okay, so. Uh, not only did I see that fence as a, uh, uh, it was protection uh, to a degree. I read in your second paragraph here too uh, about the animals, uh, t you know, going to the bathroom on your yard. A lot and of the neighbors right. would use that is to allow their dogs to it's a good do their business. Well, yeah, it's a okay. convenient place, yes. Yeah. <laughs> In that vein, okay, because I also notice that you've got a setback or a little flower space between the side and the fence. The whole way around the fence. Okay, well, here's a number to call. This is the animal control from the police department, and they will address uh, pet solutions in the event they start to let their dogs go in your flower garden. Uh, give them a call. I know Thank from you. personal experience, they will follow up and they'll contact whoever is the pet owner, and there could be financial repercussions to their activities. So, you know, I would give them a call if you have problems with dogs. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for the benefit of Greg and, and Rob, we weren't out there. They, I was out there. You, you were out there. So that's just you. Mm -hmm. They they have put together a nice landscape around. Mm -hmm. This is a, it's not, a, it's not an easy job. It's a very nice job. Yeah, they've got yellow cream city bricks. Yeah. You know, he has an engine. Yeah. Yes, it's real well done. It, it, if it were a dark, darker gray or weathered gray, you know, you drive by and not even blink. A lot of, a lot of the outside cosmetic will be changed over the summer. Uh, again, we just we have intention of finally permit for redoing, re, um, redoing the porch. We plan on putting the deck into the yard um, some more in the future as we go. Um, but really investing into the neighborhood and the house itself. Mm -hmm. I believe one of the pictures I took from the corner of Jackson and Stewart on the um, south uh, east corner, looking down the block, to show it's not sticking out any further than any other one. Yes, um, but there's another one there too, from looking east. It's in this bunch. The yard from the back from the neighbors. Yeah, that's the one there. Um, so that's from the corner of Jackson down Stewart. It doesn't protrude any further out than so what's there. Right. All right, further questions of the applicants? Or gentlemen, if you could have a seat, uh, debate amongst yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, they're, they're probably a little bit close, and they're too tall in the front. Uh, mitigating that is the fact that they, they have um, some arguments why they need that. And they've done a nice job of landscaping it and fitting it in and doing a 
quality job of milk. Um, so that's what we're from the reason. I, I personally don't have a problem with this. No, oh, I mean, I definitely, you know, unless I'm really missing something, you know, I, I'm not even concerned about the use of it or the landscaping. You know, the, the fence, um, you know, could be, you know, if it was at the new setback, could be what it is now. And to me, setback is supposed to be the average of the, you know, the neighborhood. And you look at that neighborhood and without, you know, getting into inches, it looks like it's, you know, the average of the setback. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to me, I just, I just see no problem with this. I agree, you know, I wonder if part of it is perception, as you said, <coughs> you know, that you have a six foot fence that close, mm -hmm. but. And it's a brand new fence. Like it's a brand new fence, it so. Sticks out like a sore thumb. Right, you know, if this was a whole redeveloped neighborhood where all the houses were tore down and all the new ones built with a farther setback, I think we're a little more gray area, but I think I think we should have grant this variance. Okay. I think so too. I think I'm the only one that disagrees. <laughs> what's your what's your I don't, I don't think it's if there's a hardship. It can overrule the three foot and um, and what they explain is people getting in there, well you have a way you can prevent that with a lower fence. <coughs> uh, they explain the dogs, but there's other ways to address that. Uh, when I turned the corner, that's the first thing I saw, and I was about two blocks away, it really popped out. So, I understand you're in agreement, but I, I disagree, and uh, I don't think we should grant it. Okay. I'll make a motion that we grant the variance as uh, <coughs> requested. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion before us made by Mr. Mark, seconded by Mr. Hoy to grant the variance uh, uh, at 722 Stewart, uh, as has been applied to us uh, for consideration. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Three to one, you have your variance. Thank you very much, Thank you, gentlemen. gentlemen. Thank you. Do you like the pictures? Please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Sure. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. The next item is uh, the other Nicolay Drive property, and uh, we've been asked to postpone that. So uh, if somebody wants to make a motion in that. I'll make a motion that we propose the mm -hmm. item on uh, 2607 Nicolay to the April meeting. I'll second. Okay, Mr. Mark says made the motion that we uh, delay consideration of the uh, 2607 Nicolay Drive property to next meeting. Mr. Hoy has seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. That will be done. That leaves us with the McDonald property at Angie Avenue. I could have you guys when you're done. Oh, you got it ready? Yeah. Take them on right up there. Then. <laughs> okay. See you had them. And we have a contingent. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We have Chip McDonald, we have Jared Schmidt, and we have Aaron Greitenfeld. Right. And we've got somebody else who check it down. All right. All right. Thanks. So I'm Aaron with Robert E. Robert e. Lee Associates. And uh, just to kind of give a brief background of what we're looking to do here, the McDonald's own a big swath of the industrial park down here along Angie Avenue, Bay Beach Road, Quincy Street. And one of their tenants along their Angie Avenue parcel he he leases some space from them and he uses as outdoor storage it's border Four states states yep, electrical supply and so they they utilize some of the gravel space here they use a portion of the building here and what they're looking to do is they're looking to bring on some larger poles electrical poles and larger transformer equipment so they need some extra space and they also need direct access to the rail line so what the McDonald's are doing is working with the Green Bay Met 
to possibly lease their parcel along Quincy Street. And so what we'd look to do then is, if that was to go through, is we would fill the parcel to get it up above, it's pretty low right now, to get it above, above floodplain. And then we'd look to put down a gravel uh, permanent surface to allow for outdoor storage of the equipment and temporary use. Um, and so from there, to kind of backtrack, back in 2006, a variance was granted for the McDonald's to, to maintain a gravel surface on this existing parcel. And so that was for, a, I believe, a three-year time period. And then in 2009, they were granted a permanent variance to keep it, to keep maintain the gravel surface. And so Not permanent, permanent, but permanent. provided the usage didn't change, we said we didn't have to come back every three years, mm -hmm. uh, was, I believe, the discussion of that. Is that where the Mayflower trucks park? Kind of, here. Okay. Yeah, it's the same property. And so I guess what same parcel, yeah. So I guess what we'd be looking to do is basically it would be an extension of the existing variance because we'd be moving and they might even keep their same property here and use the storage over here as well. But we'd basically be looking to expand that and install the gravel use on this property as well. And it'd be used for essentially the same thing. It'd be storage of outdoor or it'd be outdoor storage of large power poles, transformers, other power supply equipment. How much bigger is that proposed one versus the one before? Initially, we'd be looking to fill about four acres, ultimately out to about 10 acres. Mm -hmm. So I think right now we'd want to permit the full 10 if possible. Right now, I don't know if you got acres on what they use currently over there. Uh, I'm guessing, but I think it's around two. That's yeah, so two, two and a half. Yeah. So quite a bit bigger. And then CTS is using this part here Correct. for their trailer storage? Right. Yeah, they also put them over here. And that's the same lot, or the same uh, situation. Okay, but I thought I, w I saw it here. Is, yeah, is this they have, yeah, they they have trailers here, here right? but CBS also uses this lot over here. Right. Mm -hmm. So is that going to be the same style of surface that you're going to use for your... Yes, correct. Plants? Correct. Yeah. yeah, I think the biggest thing on this use is that if the consideration is is mainly focused on what is right in this portion of this lot. It's, it's fairly low um, usage. Uh, they might have a, a rail delivery once or twice a month, um, and then they might use the lot, what would you say, Chip? <coughs> a couple times a week, yeah. give or take. It's um, fairly low volume. So the, the, the biggest thing comes down to is that the, obviously there's a cost consideration to going to dustless, that's what the code says. Um, and for something this low in demand, this low in usage, um, financially it's not viable for the lease, the tenant ultimately to be able to afford the lease. Um, they like the location, rail access in and around this region is really difficult to, to have um, and to be able to direct load and unload. I think you were saying they, this is where they bring in you know, these super cells so that they can only ship them on rail, so they need to have them access, and this is their pseudo upper Midwest distribution location, is what their desire is. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, both coming from the West Coast, and they're 100 feet long, so there's very limited routes you can take for that long of travel, and they're mostly in support of Wisconsin, Upper Peninsula, for the uh, telephone poles, electrical poles. How often would trucks be driving on there? And picking up dust and stuff like that. So the, the poles that we're in are primarily in support of things that happen that they're not expecting. So it's fairly low usage. They just need to have them on site just over the winter or they knock over the heat. Would it be daily that they're that the lots being used or uh, <coughs> weekly? We do have a dust control operation that we run yeah, for well, all month. Bay Beach right there. Yeah. The kids and stuff. So yeah. how's that gonna you got a plan in place. Oh, it's not, that's nowhere, that's, uh, that's yeah, we're further still work for the west. west. But we have gravel driveways in that yeah. immediate vicinity, and we don't uh, have any problems because we take good care of making sure they have uh, dust control leaking on okay. And what they've been doing, as they talked about, as Aaron had talked about with the previous variance that was granted, is uh, where practical and possible, um, this area is all paved, uh, this stretch is paved where tenants and the tenant rents can support the paving. They've been converting um, the, the pavement to asphalt as possible. Um, one thing you don't see is they j just built 90,000 square feet? 84? 84. 
in process of building an 84,000 square foot building here. So when you look at it, proximity to Bay Beach, in the, the primary route people eat access from Bay Beach is going to be off of um, Bay Beach Road from getting off the highway right here, is that this lot is essentially 100% <coughs> from that side. Um, when you look at adjacent tenants, you've got the Met, um, McDonald's on this parcel, uh, the Met, and then the City of Green Bay. This is, I believe, the police impound lot, mm -hmm. an old incinerator, and the water tower. Um, so from a from an adjacency, you know, no residential um, visibility from Bay Beach is, you know, you wouldn't be able to see this, and the fact that it's such a low low volume user, um, but yet a critical service for for the area to be provided. Is the is the hardship really strictly financial, or is there more to it than it's just finan financial? Upfront cost is a big chunk of it too, and a lot of the transformers are pretty heavy equipment, so to maintain any kind of permanent surface there too would then it would be difficult. Okay. Low speed turnings, rips mm -hmm. asphalt, all those kind of things are with are the, negative. With the different options, like they have asphalt, concrete, all these other options. Would they all cost the same, or there, is there a range? I did a rough rough estimate for asphalt. To pave even the four acres was somewhere around two to three hundred thousand dollars. So if we were to pave at some point the full ten acres, we'd be upwards of three quarters of a million. And that's asphalt, which is usually half the price of what a concrete pavement would be. So it's a nice chunk of change to pave that for something that's going to see a truck once every week or a couple days. Has this been through any uh, city planning considerations? Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't know if they've talked to Paul really about it. We, submit the, we submitted an initial um, site plan application to them for the purpose of coming to you guys as identifying if there's any other outstanding issues <coughs> that they would have for us. Um, from a zoning standpoint, the, the use is consistent with your general industrial. Um, and then when you start looking at, we'll have to abide by post-construction stormwater during construction stormwater, so there'll, there'll be a, const a pond constructed here. Um, but for the preliminary analysis, we wanted to say, what are things that we can't abide by? And frankly, I, these guys very likely wouldn't go forward with the project, um, working through the lease, <coughs> negotiating with their tenant, if a variance won't be granted because it's just uh, it's not practical. Um, knowing that, we didn't want to put in um, a hundred percent design engineering knowing if um, we come to this point and, and it isn't received well that all that is, is kind of for nothing. So it, it has been a uh, preliminary submittal to the city and site plan. Is there like an environmental discussion as the EPA involved with the, or is that not part yeah, of it? Yeah, that looks like that's wetland to me. <coughs> yeah, well, <coughs> what we have is that's actually the historic sludge lagoon um, for, the metro? for the metro. So we're in the process of um, working with the DNR, um, independent of the city, <coughs> to classify that as either what it is or what it isn't. So right now the four acres is this more upland area, um, which has a different classification than that side. So we're in the process with that. It's actually basically going to every, I think every human at the DNR and the Madison office just to make sure everyone's comfortable with us going forward and the fact that it was historic bed and bank. It's behind the bulkhead. It was filled. It was operated as a sludge balloon. There's a clay liner in it. Um, it's been removed and then mostly filled. So we're we're working through that process. So we do still need to get um, a DNR construction permit. Um, there'll be uh, a permit issued to us from the DNR for the activities that we're doing here, and then the um, the city will have to approve our site plan as well. But as far as the EPA, <coughs> most of their uh, jurisdiction is governed by the DNR. So okay. though, yes, we have to suffice them, it's regulated through DNR local okay. projects. OK. Thank you. So if you um, followed what the ordinance required, you put in some sort of, let's say, paving for the whole, all of what you're proposing here, which is several acres. Correct. It'd be four acres immediately and then ultimately in a year or two. I don't know how far out in the future. Yeah. I think it's unknown, but unknown. Up to around ten acres. In this in this portion right here, which you know, is the area that I'm referring to mm -hmm. as being mm -hmm. a very nice <laughs> wetland, yeah. um, you'd be filling it all in. Correct. Yeah. Pro provided the I mean ultimately the DNR makes that is gonna make that decision. Right. DNR and Army Corps of Engineers. Um, and we've been in I think we're in our sixth month of 
discussing this because it's a very unique situation. Um, no one I've talked to has ever encountered this before. <laughs> um, so we're we're treading on uh, on new tires here. <coughs> Which uh, you would refer to some of it as metro property and some of it as McDonald property. Is everything within the red line McDonald property? The red is a single parcel boundary, so that's all would be all the Mets property. That's all the Mets property now. Correct. So McDonald's would be leasing would be that leasing. to then um, offer out as to one of your tenants or one of your clients. Is sort right. of mm -hmm. And they've got that preliminary agreement together, provided we can build the build the project. Because that's ultimately the Mets long 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 term development. They're going through the R two E two project now. Um, there might be a subsequent project, depending on the phosphorus regulations. Um, but that, once they're through these projects, they're almost fully built out on this piece, and that's their their long-term route in the <coughs> they need expansion, whether it's more clarifiers or um, settlement takes or what have you. Part of what the tenant wants to be in Green Bay is that they have an issue with a pole that they need. Right now, that comes from southern Wisconsin, so big storm comes through and knocks down poles. The closer they have to the, the people where the pole gets knocked down, the faster they can respond. So it's a it's strategic. They've got a yeah. plan for the suitcase disaster happens. <coughs> yeah, I can see your point there. Um, Mark, if the city was going to make a make their argument on this, uh, what would they say? As a general planning principle, we always like to see them paved. Um, that's a lot of asphalt if it was paved. So it's 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 a tricky situation yeah. from, from a planning perspective. Like I said, in, in most case, in most cases, we would say you know <coughs> we stand by the code. The code we like, you know, pavement. Yeah, the code, you know, the code doesn't make exceptions for whether or not you're. An in-town urban parking lot or something out in the industrial area like this. Correct. It doesn't differentiate, you know, size or location of the parcel. It just simply says anything that's used for parking or storage should be dust free hard surface. Yeah. And to the to the applicant's credit, you guys are proposing that there be dust control. So the if we take you at your word, what we've got is that we have, we've got a surface issue, but not a dust issue. Um, your argument is one that's economic, as Mr. Babcock has pointed out. Um, is mitigating, there mitigating against that is the fact this is an industrial area. It's it's got its own special zoning. Are you proposing? I mean, like the af the the first drive in is asphalt with rumble strips. Is that your your General dust. No, along <coughs> along uh, Quincy Street. There we show a, there's going to be a shared driveway with the parcel to the to the north up in the corner. Here. Uh, oh, no, oh, north. Here, excuse yep. Me. So we'll come in off Quincy, shared with that parcel to the north. Yep. Coming. And then so that'll all be paved up through the tracks. Okay. And then once we get past the tracks, then we'll convert into a uh, the gravel surface. Do you propose any sort of you know uh, knock off rumble strip there or anything? We certainly can look at doing that. It, it's a in situations like this that can be a common um, solution to help with the the um, dust control. What do you mean not not what do you mean? Uh, they not basically not. put like grooves in the pavement. Grooves today. in the pavement that then when the trucks run over them, it knocks extra dust okay. and dirt off the bottom <coughs> of the truck, so you're not you know making access and you know, tracking <coughs> it off site, creating a larger dust storm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think to their credit, I mean, the, there's probably, well, this is a 60 acre parcel, I believe, and maybe 70% is gravel, so they've got a long track record of, I, I don't know how many complaints the city gets on, on gravel there, but I, I know I've never heard of one, and I'd imagine I would have heard about it at some point, and I don't know if you folks have, but, you know, that's directly across from Bay Beach, and it's been directly across there for, I don't know, eight years? We've had eight years. Yeah. Yeah. city. Further discussion? Okay, gentlemen, if you can have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, I guess that's why we're here. If it were easy, it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't have to come before us. I have some concerns, obviously, about the, the dust. I mean, it's a pretty big <coughs> area. And, you know, the precedent we set by granting something like this, you know, we for other this. people. We haven't done this before. Right. But, we um, granted little ones, but this is a big one. You know, I definitely think we would want to entertain considering um, conditioning, you know, doing a condition if we grant this. I, I could appreciate the financial impact of it. But I also have that concern about, you know, the dust and the environment and the kids around the area and so forth. And, uh, but uh, at the same time, it sounds like they've got a pretty good track record and they've got a plan in place. So as long as we feel comfortable that, that it's not going to be a problem, then I don't have a problem with, you know, with granting the variance. That, those are my two cents. I think as far as uh, uh, the surface that they want to put in there, the horse has already left the barn. If we were talking about either concrete or asphalt, because like he mentioned, this part is already what they're talking about, what they have, and that's why I brought up the, the truck parking, because they're parking trailers up over here. And if you go along the drive, it's, you know, I would say it's very common, and I think it would be the exception for them to have either blacktop or concrete. It is out of the way. Um, most of the traffic, like, like the Bay Beach, did. people don't use Quincy Street, you know, unless you're, I think, some sort of a contractor. Uh, the only other people who have any closeness to it would be guys going to the boat ramp, because that's how you go to the Fox River launch. But like I say, the trucks are parking trailers there now. You know? As a chairman, I, get, I can say things last or first. <laughs> it's up to me. <laughs> I'll say this is probably one of the first ones since I've been on a member of the board that's really stumped me. You know, if that was existing gravel that had been there for years, and the variance request was to keep it that way, I don't think I'd have a problem with it. Part of my question is trucking in four acres of gravel for something that's, you know, it doesn't meet the code, but at the same time, I understand the difference. So, I'm perplexed. Well, if it starts to degrade, it's going to be on them because it's their equipment that's going to get banged up if it if it can't withstand a load. See, you see, I think what what Tom and Greg may be a little bit concerned, or uh, Tom and Greg may be a little concerned about that. We don't know how it's going to get eventually used. It's one thing to say what it says now, but we don't have a lot of say once we get let our variants go. Uh, we can condition it. We can do various things, but generally speaking, the variance is for everyone. That's, we're, we're, we'd be making the assumption here that the similar development that they have across the street is, is, uh, is forever as well. And I, you know, if, we're going to, if we're going to continue to make that a gravel part of town, we're going to essentially guarantee it if we give them this variance. I, that's one of the things I'm worried about. Have you guys talked to the alderman in your area? It would have helped if we had him here, him or she. Uh, in this project, we have not. Okay. But I'd be happy to do that. Part of my concern, too, is, you know, I mean, 10 acres, especially. That, I mean, like you said, it's essentially saying it's okay for that whole neighborhood to be gravel. Mm -hmm. Neighborhood used the recipient. 
at, at the same time, I can see their point of strategic mm -hmm. needs for large laydown areas. Do you want to postpone it? That's just where I was going. That's just where I was going. I'm hesitant to call the question on this, gentlemen. And I think that it's important enough that it may get a little more consideration than what any of the eight or nine of us have given it tonight. Um, if we were to postpone this, postpone our decision on this, would it be possible to come back and talk about this, perhaps with an alderman, perhaps with somebody who can explain to us the city's plan for this area? Because um, I'm uncomfortable with us being in the bottleneck position of saying yes or no on essentially a city planning question. Right. And um, at the same time, I don't want to say no in case that's what we're voting we may be um, so I think it's in the interests of the applicant if we postpone this I don't sense the time is of the essence <coughs> maybe I'm wrong as long as we have uh, we assuming for a month yeah uh, when your next meeting is yeah next month. yeah I, I don't see that as being a deal breaker in the long term um, but what if we can bring you specific evidence that clarifies it for you uh, that would be be helpful so we can come back and say to our customer, look, we got some input from the board. They have a few questions. They want to make sure that they understand it well. Yeah, I think you've heard our concerns. Sure. And, and um, to the extent that, that 30 days will give you an opportunity to bolster your argument, um, one way or the other, I guess, but we, you wouldn't be coming back unless you had it in favor of you. Um, at least then we know that we've given this the proper consideration because I, at this point I I share the concerns of at least two of my three colleagues that there's some some things we want to think about further and we don't think we have enough information and uh, maybe 30 days is something we should uh, just grant ourselves. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, the two of the concerns seem to revolve around long-term plans. Yes. Um, we need the city's input. Is there any evidence you'd like to see from us long term? We would like to make that more of a commercial atmosphere, which is as project by project comes, as Chair talked about, more blacktop, more hard, hard surface, especially when it's facing towards Bay Beach, other areas. We own the uh, Castle Carts area as well. So our, our best of interest is bringing it more towards that. The specific customer as a need for a large area with uh, gravel, as you said. So uh, we'd actually like to move some of the areas that are gravel away from the public. And if there's specific evidence you need from our five-year plan or, or other things, yes, we'd be happy to yes, bring yes, that and, and and we'd like to know. I think um, the extent to which this customer that you're considering for this property um, needs certain access needs certain degrees of um, firmness of foundation to sure. store what he needs um, uh, could possibly dis uh, be disruptive of a hard surface that a soft surface would help there's a number of things that would help our would help us understand what the real need is here um, to the extent to, to see whether there's a, um, a justification for a variance because it's a big piece of property, it um, it's going to be it's going to be a signal one way or the other. And we want to make sure we know what signal we're giving. Understand. So if um, it seems to be amenable to the applicant, uh, I think we could make a motion that we uh, table this for a while. Well, I guess one question I had yet is why or at what point does the the owner of the lot have culpability in the decision? you know, the owner being the city, you know, I feel like we're kind of being put on the spot to make a decision for how the city is going to develop this lot. Yeah, right. You know, so I, I guess, you know, if this was something that, yeah, I'll let I, you get that. Yeah, I just wanted to say, when you say the city developed a lot, I'm just curious what you mean by that. Because ultimately, the city sets the general zoning 
and they because allow the, the private entity to do what they do. Well, the so city, I just want to wonder, the, the city doesn't own it, the Green Bay Metropolitan Sewers District owns it. The city owns the parcel on the west side where the water tower is and then the uh, police impound lot. So okay, so Metro owns the lot that you're going to develop on. Correct. Yeah, correct. So, so at yeah, some point you're mentioning that the Metro city. has plans for this. Well, then ultimately they would at some point, but they don't know what that is. Because I will say for me personally, if this was your lot, mm -hmm. I have a lot better feeling about this whole thing because sure. you do have the history, you have the vested interest. My fear is we've got a 10 acre gravel pit, mm -hmm. you know, that is used until some point and now we need it for retention ponds and now you're tearing us all out. And, you know, I guess I'm wondering <coughs> what point the Metro should yeah. be in here explaining exactly. this to us. And we can bring them with We may need to hear from the yeah. Metro, the, the owner of the property, to, to uh, get a better handle too on the long-term plan. <clears throat> Excuse me for that parcel. I'll make a motion to table this for the next meeting. I'll second. Okay, well, we have a motion before us. We have <coughs> Mr. Babcock seconded by Mr. Hoy. Uh, to table the McDonald property uh, item until the next meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that's that's where it stands. Um, next meeting, presumably in 30 days or 31 days or 35 days or whatever it works out to be, we'll talk about this again. Um, and you guys will have um, perhaps some more backup. <coughs> Do we need to resubmit or will you automatically be put on the next agenda? It'll it'll automatically. It's automatically. It's automatically. Yeah, just, yeah, we weren't trying to squeeze another fee out of you. <laughs> well, no, I just want to make sure there wasn't a <laughs> policy process standpoint. Yeah, we, the, we're non-profit up here. We don't get squat. <laughs> just so you know. We have learned that some boards get paid. We do not. All right, we seem to have uh, one more item that nobody is here for. Is that correct? Or did I miss one? Nope, that was me. Oh, sorry. I guess I was having so much fun, I didn't realize this was the end. <laughs> Thanks, uh, gentlemen. We'll see you do. next time. I'll make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Don't Aye. take your drawing here, too. You don't. You don't. Until Aye. next time. Yep. Aye. Thank, Aye. You. Thank you. Thank you. You guys know where I'm at, no? The guy that was here?